So that the, in this in this dream, these angels, by means of wahi, are telling the Messenger والسلام, a complete prognosis, a complete detailed analysis of what exactly is wrong. So what did he? How did he do this magic? There's this device he put. He took the hairs from the comb and he tied it up, and they blew on it, and they put it underneath this banu, you know, th- this well, Lu Arwan. It's at the bottom, and the Messenger knew where that well was. So what should he do to protect himself? And so in this narration, they recited, these angels recited Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. How many ayat all together in these surahs? 11 ayat. If you combine the two together, all together you get 11 ayat. How many knots were tied? 11 knots. And this knotting that was tied, this part of their spell casting that, that they did, whatever kind of black magic it was, 11 knots were tied. So the Messenger ﷺ instructs his companions to retrieve the item that's placed under the rock. He goes there himself, he looks at the knotted device, he, t- he unties a knot, and he re- recites an ayah and unties a knot. Recites the next ayah, unties another knot. Recites the next ayah, unties another knot. With every, 11 ayat altogether, 11 knots altogether. And at the end of it, he, see, he describes himself as being relieved, and be, an ailment being removed, or him coming out of darkness into light. SubhanAllah. Then there are other implications of Al-Falaq that the ulama talk about, very beautiful things. Was, uh, you know, this surah is about being put in psychological or social difficulty. You know, night is a time of fear. Jealousy, you're worried somebody might harm you. Magic is someone, something that's putting you under depression and difficulty. You're, so you're constricted, this deep. And by Allah saying, Falaq, using the word falaq, which is basically ripping through, tearing through whatever problems you have. It is, it is as though Allah Azza wa is saying, وَسِعَ بَعْضَ الضِّيقِ It's like having openness and relaxation after you were constricted and tight. It was like you were imprisoned, and when Allah said, you call on Allah as the master of the one who tears things open. Who tear, he tore open your, your constriction and gave you relaxation and expanded things for you, subhanAllah. Do you know what falaq is? The Messenger asked the Sahabi, do you know what falaq is? And he answered him, بَابٌ فِي النَّارِ إِذَا فُتِحَتْ سُعِرَتْ جَهَنَّمُ It is a door in the hellfire. When it is opened, the entire hellfire gets ablazed. The flame just gets excited. It's one of the doors in hellfire that tears open and then all hell literally breaks loose. Literally. Another hadith in regards to falaq. هُوَ سِجْنٌ فِي جَهَنَّمُ يُحْبَسُ فِيهِ الْجَبَّارُونَ وَالْمُتَكَبِّرُونَ وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَتَتَعَوَّذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْهُ SubhanAllah This falaq that Allah takes mastery over, this word, the Messenger says it is a prison in Jahannam. It's a prison in hellfire. In it are all the tyrants and arrogant people and it is so terrible that hellfire itself seeks refuge of Allah from falaq. That's how horrible that place is. But the question is, why place this word falaq? It has all those literary meanings that we talked about and how it brings relief. But now it seems to me that the word al-falaq is also delivering punishment. The question is punishment for who? This surah is a surah not just dedicated to seeking refuge, but it's a surah dedicated to describing certain kinds of criminals. Certain kinds of criminals who engage in the act of sharr. And in particular, which shurur are mentioned, which ashrar are mentioned, the, the ones that are mentioned are number one, the, you know, uh, specifically al-nafathat fil uqad and hasid ila hasad. Ghasiq ila waqab is actually, it's left in the dark what the evil is. It may or may not be, uh, the, the dark night may or may not be evil. The explicit evils mentioned are sorcery and jealousy. And what we're learning is, for people who engage in these acts, and act out on them, then their punishment is al-falaq. Because Allah is the master of al-falaq. Allah Azza wa intends clearly by saying qul in the beginning of the surah, that He wants the human being to announce his weakness with his tongue. It's one thing to realize I'm weak. It's another to announce it. Now when you announce your weakness, is that an act of arrogance or humility? It's an act of humility. It's an act of declaring I have no power, I am declaring I'm powerless, I need your protection. Now it's possible somebody needs protection, but their ego gets in the way and they don't ask. They really want it, but they don't ask because their ego gets in the way. Or even when they ask, they don't say it out loud. Can you protect me please? They just say it like under their, under their breath. Why? Because they're too embarrassed to say it out loud. Because when they say it out loud, it exposes how weak they are. So Allah says, I want you to expose how weak you are to yourself. I want you to get rid of every ounce of arrogance there may be inside you. The word qul removes arrogance. Removes from you istighna. So now, now listen. 
Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Al-I'lan, the first reason for this. He says, Al-I'lan an hajatihi li rabbihi dururi min nawahi. Making this announcement to, of your need before Allah out loud is important for several, man, for several reasons, from several perspectives. One of them, awaluha fihi qatlun lil ujub bin nafs. In that declaration, there is the murder of your imp- you being impressed with yourself. It kills your ego when you say before Allah, "I'm declaring it." This is that qul. You're saying Allah is commanding you say it out loud. It kills your ego. Was shu'ur al kathib bil istighna and your false sense of you know I don't need any protection. You're you're getting that false sense of protection out of your system. Wahada min asbab al tughyan and having that false sense of protection is a kind of shirk and arrogance. Because Allah says, كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرْرَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى The human being thinks, he truly rebels, does he think he doesn't have any needs? So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, declare that you have a need. Declare openly that you have a need. This will ensure your sincerity. Now you'll appreciate one more thing about why this surah is here. What was the previous surah? Ikhlas. Here's a manifestation of ikhlas. The previous surah was teaching you what does it mean to believe in Allah who is Ahad. We had a long discussion about Ahad. And to develop that sincerity before Allah. Now that sincerity manifests in you truly killing and slaughtering your own ego. That is inside the word Qul. Essentially the word Rabb necessitates the existence of an authority. You obey him because he is your Rabb. U'budu Rabbakum. You know, enslave yourselves to your master. Now, why is that important? وَالْأَمْرُ الْآخِرْ أَنَّهُ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الطَّاعَةِ يَعْنِي هَذَا الْإِعْلَالِ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الطَّاعَةِ لِأَنَّكَ إِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ بِشَخْصٍ تُطِيعُهُ وَلَا تَعْصِيهِ فَكَيْفَ تَسْتَعِينُ بِهِ وَتَعْصِيهِ How can it be that you're asking His help while disobeying Him? You can't ask Allah's help. You, you would never ask anybody's help while disobeying them and disregarding them at the same time. What we are learning here is if you really want Allah to protect you, what must you be doing first? You must be obeying Him. So the discussion begins with the command of Allah and you, you complying with that command. What that does is it necessitates in you the need to be in obedience to Allah for the protection to actually come before you. You're entering not only into the protection of Allah, but also into the obedience of Allah. From the, from the you know, I seek refuge from the evil of all creation or everything that's been created. He said, ma khalaqa, what He subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Why is that important? Because whatever harm the creation can cause you, know that the one who created it has more power. He can save you from that harm because he's the one in the end who created it. So his reference, him getting credit for being the creator, gives him power over whatever harm the creation may be able to cause.